College football week three against the spread. This is the under the radar pick 'em. Week one, I went nine and three. Week two, I went five and seven. Not nearly as good last week. But that's okay. We're getting back on this wagon. Ah, 14 and 10 against the spread thus far on the season. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Game number one Western Kentucky heads to Indiana. And the Hoosiers are a six and a half point favorite. The total sits at 62 to 12 p.m. Eastern time on the Big Ten Network. Uh, this one opened Indiana at seven and a half, and the line has moved towards Western Kentucky on this. Uh, Western Kentucky, four and one against the spread, their last five on the road, five and two against the spread, their last seven non conference games. So they have certainly looked good. Indiana, five and two against the spread against Conference USA. They are one and six against the number in their last seven at home. And they are one and four against the spread in their last five non-conference games. It appears to me that this team for Indiana is better than they were last year. And that that team last year, now at Western Kentucky is not as good as they were last year. Indiana is better than they were. Indiana won this game 33 to 30 last year. Like, I mean, it was right down to the wire. But Indiana only got two wins last year, and this was one of them on the road at Western Kentucky. Now, the Hilltoppers have to go back to Bloomington. Look, WKU is coming off of a bye. Uh, Indiana did not look great last week. They were down 10 to nothing at the half against Idaho, but they came out, they scored 29 points unanswered. They went touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. I mean, it was just surgical how they did in the second half. In the first half, it was fumbles, it was interceptions, a turnover on downs at the two-yard line that Idaho then took 98 yards for a touchdown to make it 10 to nothing. I mean, all these different things. Um, it, Western Kentucky, the numbers show that they've been pretty good against the pass, but their strength of schedule is number 121 in the country. Indiana is throwing the ball 57% of the time, and they've been pretty decent. I like DJ Matthews. I like what Counter Bazelak's doing. Like, they found a way to make these guys successful. I'm going to ride with Indiana here to cover the 6.5. I like what they're doing in Bloomington right now. And I think they will cover this weekend. Moving along, Georgia at South Carolina. South Carolina is a 24-and-a-half point home dog. Latest line over at BetUS. The total sits at 55. It's 12 p.m. Eastern time game on ESPN. Uh, looking at the trends here. Georgia 20-6 and six against the spread after a spread loss. They did not cover that huge number against Samford last week. Only won 33 to nothing. Uh, they, they were not interested in that game, not in the slightest. And they've got a game next week against Kent State. This is their sole focus right here is on this game. Uh, they are 35-16 and 16 against the spread in their last 51 road games. That's absurd. That, I mean, that is just unbelievable numbers there. Uh, South Carolina 4-1 and one against the spread coming off of a straight-up loss. They certainly did lose at Arkansas last week. Four and one against the spread their last five home games. However, they are three and twelve against the spread in their last fifteen against the SEC. This is in fact an SEC game. Uh, South Carolina's offensive line could not block Arkansas. I don't see how they are going to block Georgia this weekend. You're going to have to basically hope for turnovers and field position luck. And South Carolina typically would have a special teams advantage over most teams. Uh, I don't think they necessarily have it against Georgia. Um, Georgia, in non-garbage time, is throwing the ball 65% of the time. Uh, South Carolina, their defense can stop the pass, but I think this is just an overwhelming game. I think that Georgia takes it out on South Carolina. I know it's a big line. I'm going to take Georgia to cover 24.5, even on the road here. All the trends line up, and South Carolina being down 2 Additional defenders now. Um, I haven't seen enough out of Spencer Rattler yet. And I think Georgia can really, really confuse him. So I will take Georgia to cover 24 and a half here. Moving along, we have got Cal going to Notre Dame. And this one, Notre Dame favored by 11. Latest line at BetUS. The total sits at 40. This is 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on NBC. Tyler Buckner, of course, is out for Notre Dame for the rest of the season. So Drew Pine, it appears, is the guy. Cal is 16-7 and against the spread their last 23 road games. They are 5-0-1 coming off of a spread loss, and they only beat UNLV 20-14 last week. It was a last-minute 
defensive stand that got them the W there. Notre Dame 5-2 and two against the spread following a spread loss. They are 11-5 and five against the spread against winning teams. They are 8-2 and two against the spread in their last 10 games. But I got to tell you, Notre Dame in the trenches, that ain't it. Now, I don't know that Cal is a whole lot better, but I will tell you that Cal with the plumber kid from Purdue has been surprisingly good in the passing game. Uh, I don't know that Notre Dame can score on Cal's defense. I think that Cal will be able to hang with them in this game. 11 points feels like it's too much. I'm going to ride with Cal. I mean, they have been money on the road under Wilcox. So I'm going to take Cal to cover the 11 here. I mean, it's just, it's a weird spot for Notre Dame to be in. Normally, they cover these kind of games. Normally, they handle the games that they are supposed to. So, moving along after that one. Tulane at Kansas State. What a fun, fun matchup this is. Of course, everybody knows how much I love Willie Fritz if you've watched this show for any length of time. But also enjoy Chris Kleiman. I know what he's doing with Adrian Martinez. They're not throwing the football a whole lot. Uh, Kansas State, a 14-point favorite. Latest line over at BetUS. The total sits at 47 and a half. 3 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN+. Plus. So this one's not even on regular linear television. This one's only on streaming. Uh, here's the first thing you need to know. Kansas State is playing Oklahoma next week. So this is a bit of a look-ahead spot for them. Tulane 4-0 against the spread in their last four games overall. They are 9-4 and against the spread in their last 13 non-conference games. However, they are 2-5 and against the spread their last seven against winning teams. Kansas State fits that bill. Kansas State 4-0 against the spread in their last four non-conference games. They are 5-1 and against the number at home in their last six. Uh, looking at this, Tulane, I mean, their quarterback, Pratt, has been awesome thus far this year. But they've played UMass and Alcorn State, I believe it was. I mean, just no competition whatsoever. Uh, Tulane, I mean, they've been great at stopping the run. But again... Strength of schedule here. Kansas State, oh, excuse me, number 128, strength of schedule. That's where they sit right now uh, out of 131 teams. Kansas State, I mean, they smoked Missouri's passing game last week. They just shut them down. And if that's what Tulane has to lean on because their running numbers thus far this season have not been good, I'm, I'm interested in this one because I don't think that Kansas State would have to do too much to be able to cover by more than two touchdowns here. I know everybody's on Tulane because of the spot. I understand that. And I think Tulane is going to be a good football team. I think Kansas State outmans them here. This line opened at BetUS at 17. It's down to 14. It opened at 20 at some of the other books. It's all the way down to 14 points. It's moved that much. That's too much for me. I like Kansas State here to cover the 14. I think they are significantly more talented, especially in the trenches, than Tulane. Now, Tulane's going to be fine in AAC play and against some of these other teams that they have to play this season. But... Not against Kansas State. Kansas State looks like a juggernaut right now. Liberty. Liberty heads to Wake Forest. And Wake Forest is a 16.5 point home favorite, courtesy of BetUS, of course. Uh, The total sits at 63.5. It's 5 p.m. Eastern time on the ACC network. Uh, Going through, I mean, Sam Hartman came back last week and absolutely rolled through Vanderbilt uh, just a ton, ton of points. Liberty 0 and 4 against the spread their last 4 on the road. They are 8 and 3 against the spread their last 11 against the ACC, and that's definitely good. But Wake Forest has been pretty good at home. 11 and 5 against the spread at home. Uh, anybody that's watching the video sees me scratch my nose. My apologies because my god, the uh, the allergies are just ridiculous in Memphis right now. Uh Wake Forest 4 and 0 against the spread in their last 4 non-conference games. Like I said, 11-5 and five against the spread at home. Uh, however, you look at you look at Liberty, their last 23 games overall, they are 16-7. and seven. Hugh Freeze finds a way to stay in these games and to sometimes win games that he's not supposed to. Uh, Liberty is number 117 in PPA per pass. I don't know. I don't think that they're going to be able to keep up with Wake Forest here. It's not that Wake Forest has a great defense by any stretch of the imagination. But, like, I love Salter, but you're going to have to throw the ball to be able to keep up here, and I don't know that I've seen enough from him as far as actually generating points to where I think that they're going to keep up. This seems, I love having the hook here. 
I'll take Wake Forest minus 16 and a half. I think, uh, I think they could run them out. Like at Liberty has been a fun story this year, but at this, this could be, this could be where the rubber meets the road. Mississippi State heading to Baton Rouge against LSU. The Tigers, excuse me, the Tigers are a two point home underdog. Lines courtesy, of course, of BetUS. And the total sits at 53.5. Now, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN. That means this game is going to end as a night game in Death Valley. LSU, so far, uh, the numbers are not good against the pass. E- even last week against Southern. Um, that's not good when you got Mike Leach coming to town, right? Mississippi State 5-1 and one against the spread after a spread win. They got that at Arizona last week. They are 5-1 and one against the number on the road. Yeah, everybody remembers what they did two years ago when they came to Baton Rouge. K.J. Costello threw for about 1,500 yards in one game because Bo Pelini would not drop uh, defenders. Uh, four and one against the spread against the SEC in their last five. Mississippi State has something rolling here. LSU one and four against the spread after a straight-up win. They got that over Southern last week. They are 0-3-1 against the spread their last four after getting a spread win. They didn't see a ton of them last year. Um, they did get a spread win last week against Southern. I mean, they absolutely blew their doors off last week. Um, but again, that's Southern. It's a different deal. I, I like Mississippi State here. Uh, the Mississippi State defense is awesome. I think that those edge defenders are going to be able to keep Jalen Daniels in the pocket, Jaden Daniels in the pocket. I I like State. I think this is a really good team. And LSU, yeah, they got some things to figure out and whatnot, and this is not a good time to have to play. A really, Remember, I've told you in the past, Mississippi State, one of the oldest teams in college football. This is not a good time to have a bunch of transfers trying to figure it out, even at home. So give me Mississippi State to cover two. Let's see. Texas Tech heading to NC State. The Red Raiders. NC State, a 10-point favorite, and the total sits at 56. And, of course, the line's courtesy of BetUS. 7 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. Looking at this, Texas Tech, 6-0 against the spread following a spread loss. Uh, I think they closed three-and-a-half favorites over Houston last week. Uh, They are 0-4-1 against the spread after a straight-up win, but they are 5-2 against the spread in their last seven road games. Uh, NC State, however, really, really good at home. Now, obviously, you saw they didn't perform well at ECU, but 11-3 against the spread in their last 14 at home. They are 1-4 against the spread after a spread win. Uh, My number on this was NC State by 8.5. This is a highly volatile matchup. I I don't think that I'm going to play this one. However, since this is the pick on part of the show, I am going to give a pick on the show and I'm going to take Texas Tech to cover the 10 because my number is at 8.5. Donovan Smith had five sacks and two interceptions against Houston, or whatever the number was. Uh, NC State's defense is a different beast than what Houston had. It's just bananas what he can do on offense, though. He's got a cannon for an arm, uh, as Parker said on the Bet U.S. College Football Show. He, he could single-handedly win this game or he could single-handedly lose this game. For Texas Tech. It's all over the place. The variance in this college football game is going to be absolutely insane. And I cannot wait to see what happens. Cannot wait. But I will take Texas Tech plus the 10 here. Uh, The line opened at 9.5. It's up to 10. I understand it. But I will take Tech uh, plus the 10. Just because I anything could happen here. Tech could get blown out by 30 points. Or they could win the game outright. I mean, you never know. So, I will take Tech on that one. Toledo heads into the shoe. That's right. Ohio State, a 32-point favorite. Total sits at 62.5 over at BetUS, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Fox. Of course, they got to put the Buckeyes on national television, even against Toledo. I get it. Uh, Toledo, 7-1 against the spread. Their last eight on the road. They are 2-6, however, against the number against winning teams. Ohio State is certainly that. Ohio State 1 and 6 against the home in their last 7 non-conference games. They are 4 and 9 against the spread in their last 13 at home and they are 9 and 4 against the spread against the MAC. 
So uh, some trends that are going in different directions here. Look, Ohio State hosts Wisconsin next week. Um, is this a look-ahead spot for them? I mean, do, does Ohio State look ahead to Wisconsin? I mean, do they do they really care about that game? Uh, Toledo's defense has been uh, pretty awesome. I mean, it just just pretty awesome. They can they can turn this into a game. They can also move the ball pretty slowly. Um, what I'm curious about is the quarterback Daquan Finn for Toledo. How does he look in this game? In the last game, which was just an absolute blowout win over, I believe, an FCS team, he was 12 out of 26 passing. Now, they had a ton of yards and everything, and they won the game going away, but 12 of 26? Like, I know he had 74 yards rushing. I don't know that you're going to be able to do that against Ohio State. Um, But look at this. Like, I think Toledo, in-state matchup, et cetera, Ohio State got a big game coming up next week. Situationally, Maybe Toledo plays up, Ohio State plays down. I'll, I'll take the Rockets plus thirty-two. I, I think I think that they can keep this within about thirty-one, uh, <laughs> which is not something you really necessarily want to bet on. But uh, since I'm picking them on the show, I will take Toledo plus thirty-two here. Arkansas State heads to the Liberty Bowl to face off against the Memphis Tigers. Memphis is a 14-point favorite. The total sits at 65.5 over at BetUS right now. 7 p.m. Eastern time game on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, Arkansas State, 9-1 and one against the spread in their last 10 non-conference games. Uh, that includes a cover last week at Ohio State. They are 8-1 uh, against the number in September. So they normally start off well against the spread, and they are 4-1 and one against the number against AAC opponents. Memphis 3-12 and 12 against the spread coming off of a straight-up win. They are 1-4 and four against the spread in their last five games overall. That one right there was last week's win over Navy, which looks to be just completely hapless. Uh, just awful. Uh, Arkansas State has covered the last two years against Memphis. Uh, both teams have really bad pass defenses. Um, Memphis has a better passing offense. Now, with that said, I do think because of the location between these two teams, uh, Jonesboro is only about 80 miles away from Memphis. I I look at what Butch Jones is building there. I think that they can stay in this game. I don't know that they can win this game. But I will take Arkansas State to cover the third, or the 14 right here uh, because I think that they can, they've got pride about themselves, especially locally. You don't want to go just right down the road and get run out of the stadium. I don't imagine that they will. Uh, I don't know that Memphis can really blow out a ton of teams. I know they did Navy last week, but I think that's a different ordeal. Uh, I think Arkansas State can keep up offensively. I think I think they got some weapons on offense. I would look for them to stay within the 14 on this one. Three more games to go. USF heading to Gainesville. Now, this is an interesting game. Florida, favored by 24 at home. The total sits at 60 lines, courtesy of BetUS. 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on the SEC Network. South Florida, they play slow, and they got a good quarterback. That's definitely, definitely good here. Um, That total of 60 is just bonkers. Just bonkers to me. Uh, South Florida, 14-3 and against the spread. Their last 17 following a spread loss, and they did not cover last week. So... Uh, they are two and five against the spread on the road. They are two and five against the spread. Their last seven against SEC opposition. Florida, however, I mean, you look at last year's numbers, just brutal. One and five against the spread in their last six at home. They are one and seven against the spread. Their last eight non-conference games. They are oh six and oh excuse me, zero and six against the spread after a spread loss, which last week certainly was, considering they were favored over Kentucky and got beat. Just uh, um. USF has been pretty good on the ground. I, I'm curious about Florida's defense. They Their numbers so far against the run have not been impressive. Uh, this looks like a game that South Florida could maybe slow down a little bit. If they do, I like them to stay within the, the 24. So I'm, I'm going to take the Bulls plus 24. I don't think that they can win. But I think you can get maybe an interception off Anthony Richardson. You can make Florida make a mistake or two. You can hold on to the football, and you might be able to score a couple of times against that defense. 
Uh, I'm looking at something like 30 to 14, you know, somewhere around there, whatever it is, 31 to 14. Uh, they can keep it within 24. I, I would certainly, certainly think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, USF plus 24 on that one. Next one up, San Diego State heading to Utah in a revenge spot. Yikes. Uh, Utah favored by 21 points at home. The total sits at 49 and a half. This one's 10 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. Of course, latest lines courtesy of BetUS. Revenge game. Revenge game, revenge game, revenge game. Utah has an offense. San Diego State does not. Uh, looking at the the trends, of course, San Diego State 9-4 and four against the spread in their last 13 against non-conference opposition. 2-6-1 and one against the spread in their last nine overall. Uh, the defense, yeah, defense is good. But, man, that offense cannot score. Uh, Utah 5-1 and one against the spread in their last six at home. They are 6-2 and two against the spread in their last eight against the Mountain West even though they lost to San Diego State last year. Uh, and they are 2-11 and 11 against the spread in September, but I think that they are getting this monkey off their back. Utah, I know they've got Arizona State next week, but I, Utah, I don't believe, is going to turn the ball over like they did against Florida. I don't think that San Diego State can score if Utah doesn't give them the ball. That's just my outlook on this. I'm going to take Utah minus 21. I like it all the way up to 24. I think they're going to smoke them. Uh, I mean, they put up 73 last week. You're not going to be able to do that on San Diego State. But this defense is not as good as it was last year. So I, I look for Utah to put up points in bunches in this spot for sure. Give me the Utes. Give me the Utes. Finally, last game here. Fresno State heads to Southern California inside of Memorial Stadium. The total is 74. USC is a 12.5 point favorite latest line courtesy of BetUS. Uh, USC, in their first two games, has 49 points off turnovers. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit for a minute and let you digest that. 49 points off turnovers in two weeks. That's nuts. I don't think they're going to get that from Fresno State this week. Not at all. Uh, Fresno, 6-1 and one against the spread against the Pac-12 in their last seven. Of course, the loss, I believe, was last week. Uh, <laughs> they are 28-1 and one against the number after a straight-up loss. They are 22-8-1 in their last 31 on the road. Seems like pretty good trends, right? USC on the other side, everybody knows how bad it was under Clay Hilton or under, uh, I went blank, whoever the interim was last year, right? Last year was not a good year for USC, so these trends don't exactly shine a good light on the Trojans. 5-11 and 11 against the spread in their last 16 non-conference games, 2-5 and five against the spread their last seven at home. They are 1-4 and four against the spread after a straight-up win. Uh, here's, here's the question. Can Jake Hayner and Fresno keep from turning the ball over? That's the biggest question. Uh, the Williams passing game, I mean, Mario Williams and uh, Jordan Addison, along with Caleb Williams, and then Travis Dyes. I mean, that offense is loaded, and that offensive line has been spectacular. I don't think Fresno is going to stop USC from scoring. However, I don't think the Hainers going to turn the football over a whole bunch, and I think they're going to be able to score on that USC defense. Do I like USC to win the game? Yeah. Do I like Fresno to cover the 12 and a half? Yes, I also like that as well. I also like that as well. All right, that is going to wrap things up for today's show. I am so pumped about this weekend. I hope that you guys are as well. Head over to BetUS. They are who brings you the show each and every week. If you have not already, sign up for the Picks Contest. You can go over to winningcureseverything.com. Check it out over there. It's the contest page right there on the website. Easy enough to do. Or you can just follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. I post that thing out, especially more towards the end of the week. Make sure that we've got a ton of competition for you guys. Whoever wins gets a $25 Amazon gift card. And if you have a BetUS sign-up account or a BetUS account or whatever, uh, you get a $50 free play as well. So go ahead and make sure that you are taking advantage of that. Jump into the contest. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter at GaryWCE. 
and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.